towards it has access to the okay you you got it you got it we're good, we're good. <laughs> i started it we'll too late <laughs> all right cool 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 uh, all right then <laughs> without further ado then since it's 201 we'll not wait for sarah um <laughs> we can start um <laughs> well, hello and welcome to our uh Virtual movie discussion. Today's topic is the 2016 movie Race. I am one of your co-hosts, uh, Dr. Karen Wisely. I teach history at the Northeast campus of TCC. I am joined by... Hi, I'm Samantha Elkins, and I also teach history at the Northeast campus of TCC. And we have a couple of other uh, faculty members in the uh, chat, in the uh, room here. I don't know if you guys want to uh, introduce yourselves or um, if we can do that whenever you have comments to make. Um, how about that? All right. Um, our custom when we're doing one of these events is to start with a little introduction where I read the log line or brief description of the movie and then go over some of the main cast members and where you may have seen them before. So, the logline for race, young Jesse Owens becomes a track and field sensation while attending the Ohio State University in the early 1930s. With guidance from coach Larry Snyder, Owens gains national recognition for breaking numerous records. After heated debates, the United States decides not to boycott the Olympics in Nazi Germany Overcoming racism at home and abroad, Owen seizes the opportunity to show Berlin and the world that he's the fastest man alive. It stars Stefan James as Jesse Owens. What I remember most clearly about him is that I mispronounced his name last year when we were talking about Selma, where he played John Lewis. But he also starred in If Beale Street Could Talk and was in 21 Bridges, which is a really intense movie starring the late, great Chadwick Boseman. Stefan James is a really good actor, and he's from Canada. <laughs> Not the U.S., but significantly closer to us than Britain. Jason Sudeikis as Larry Snyder. You should know him from being Ted Lasso on Ted Lasso. And if you've never seen Ted Lasso, what are you waiting for? Get Apple Plus and watch it. Then watch Shrinking and Bad Sisters, too. Um, I'm not going to give you any more of Jason Sudeikis. Uh, it's Ted Lasso. And if you haven't seen Ted Lasso, you should. It's great. It's a great show. Um, Eli Gorey as David Alberton. Uh, you may know him from playing Cassius Clay in One Night in Miami. Uh, have you seen that movie? It's it's. I liked it, but not as much as I wanted to. Um, he is also Canadian, um, which is an improvement. But again, we're the black American actors playing black American historical figures. Um, Shanice R Banton as Ruth Solomon. Um, apparently, the only thing of consequence that she had done before this was Degrassi, The Next Generation. I don't know. Maybe one of the youngs know what that is. Um, since appearing in Race, she has been in 98 episodes of a show called Murdoch Mysteries. Have you heard of that? I had never heard of it. It's been on for 17 seasons. And I'd I feel never like heard it's of it on before. BritBox or something. It's a Canadian show. Because guess what? It's another Canadian playing a, an important American historical figure. So, yay. Um, <laughs> Carice Van Houten as Lini Riefenstahl. Uh, she's Hitler's propagandist uh, and filmmaker. Uh, you probably know Carice as the red woman, Melisandre, from the Game of Thrones. <laughs> she's a Dutch actress, so most of the stuff she's been in is European stuff. Um, but, um, she, she's, that's changing now since the Game of Thrones kind of brought her to the, uh, Hollywood's, um, attention. Um, Jeremy Irons as Avery Brundage. Jeremy Irons has 111 acting credits on IMDb. 
But for the young crowd, he is probably best known for being the voice of Scar in Disney's The Lion King. Are you crying? Yeah. Um, <laughs> William Hurt as Jeremiah Mahoney. Um, here's another guy with a lot of credits, including several Academy Award nominations and one single win uh, for Kiss of the Spider Woman. But again, the, the youth might recognize him from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, where he played Secretary of, Ch of State Thaddeus Ross. Um, William Hurt, unfortunately, passed away in 2022. He was a, he was a great actor. He, he really was. There's a lot of good movies that he was in. Um, broadcast News was really good. Um, um, gosh. Um, Children of a Lesser God was amazing. So, yeah. You know, he's, this is been, silly. But he also was Doctor Who, and I just have to point that out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he was the doctor, okay? okay. He I, was I mean, really I, good. yeah, you can count on on you to bring up the the, the nerdy stuff. That's that's what, <laughs> that's what we have you here for, right? Um, all right, David Cross, um, Cross with a K, stars as Carl Luz Long. Um, and honestly, you probably don't know him. He acted in a lot of German films because he is German. Uh, if you saw 2008's The Reader, starring Kate Winslet, where she won an Academy Award, uh, he was in that. He played the young Michael Berg. Um, if you saw the film War Horse from 2011, he was in that too, just as a German soldier named Gunther. It doesn't even have a last name, so... For like five seconds, he was in that. Um, very German guy. Good actor from what I can tell. Um, Race was directed by Stephen Hopkins and released in 2016. Its running time is two hours and 14 minutes. So under the dreaded three-hour mark. Um, what did you think? What, what did you think about it? Sorry, I was waiting for my mic to unmute. I ah. um, I enjoyed it, but um, looking it up after, there was like one particular review of it that stuck out to me that mm -hmm. I was like, that is my thoughts exactly on this movie. And it said, trying to find it exactly. Um, da, 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 da. Um, where did it go? <laughs> Shooting, it's I'm one so that I read too, where it says you don't really learn a lot about Jesse Owens, but <laughs> yeah, well, it was kind of like it was just it was a modest enjoyment kind of thing, like it was enjoyable, it was good, but not like nothing that hit it out the ballpark. Like, oh wow, there was a couple of moving scenes, but it was just kind of like, oh, that was a movie I watched, so you didn't cry. Um. No, I did not cry. I think this is the first one this semester I haven't cried in. So I'm like, hey, I'll take it. <laughs> so I don't cry at everything. Yeah, uh, that's good. Um, <laughs> my thoughts you? on this, um, from what I what I was reading too, is there was a there was a review that said basically that it was you know it was a good movie, um, but it doesn't really give you a whole lot of a great glimpse at, as to who Jesse Owens was. But then, but then I started thinking about it, and I was like, well, it's called Race. It's not called Jesse Owens. Mm -hmm. And and it does really kind of it's a build up, and then the race that happens in in. 36 I mean, races, I guess, that happened in, in, 30, in the 36 Olympics. And, and it really, there's a lot, a lot of buildup to it, a lot of different, you know, places coming together and it all, that's like the climax of the movie. And then it kind of doesn't go anywhere and doesn't really give you a whole lot of information about what happens to him afterwards, except for that one scene at the very end where he is, he has to, even though he is the man being honored at that uh, mm -hmm. hotel, he has to enter through uh, the service entry. And, and so, but, but that is very, it is very poignant because that is exactly what happened to him when he came back home. And, and, you know, and we make this big deal about people 
um, going into the 36 Olympics, particularly black people, particularly even Jewish people and other ethnicities, going into Berlin in 1936 to fight, to, to win these races and, and to show Hitler that his master race is not any better. And, and then uh, they come home and they're treated like absolute garbage. And, uh, you know, it, it was, that's, that's what happened. And that's what happened during the war too. Um, you know, that we were talking about in our, our live event yesterday with the Tuskegee Airmen, they came back and it was still segregated South. There were still that, that, that spike in lynching post World War II that they had to deal with. And, and, and after they had put their lives on the line for their country, so it, it it was it was very poignant in in that there were. Um, I will say were, I loved that ending scene because it didn't try to sweep it under the rug. It right. did point out that like he is fighting for not just like himself, but for black people all together and fighting against just that whole Germany Hitler regime. But pointing out that like we weren't just like the automatic good guys. It did add just a little bit of nuance. And I won't lie, like I did really like the scene of the little boy asking for his like autograph. Um, because I do feel like there's something we said that so often changes come slowly because they change with generations. Mm -hmm. And especially so with sports, because that is something that every kid generally on some level will watch someone in their sports world that they want to cheer for and it doesn't matter what their race it doesn't matter their background it matters that wow they're the best of the best and aren't they so good and so I did yeah. really like that little hopeful moment but that they didn't shy away from that no America was not there yet then mm -mm. By yeah, any no, it, was, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't so um all right so uh we've we've started off the conversation so <laughs> anybody else who wants to join in come on um we, we can we can certainly um you know uh we know we how to certainly... talk but we'd love to hear from you yeah, we will certainly we'll keep talking, but you un, you unmute anytime you want to add to this discussion. Um, go ahead, Lisa. Hey, <laughs> hey. Um, so the, I don't know. Maybe this is a weird question or something, but um, when I was uh, watching it, um, there were scenes, you know, that I I was like, oh. Um, some people in there, you know, maybe not going to get an Oscar for that or whatever. But anyway, it's yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, it, this was my curiosity, and I, it, it's again, I think it's a weird question, but I, I was, I've always thought like, if we could be a fly on the wall back when people were so um, outward with their racism. Mm -hmm. um, so he's at a race. And the audience is like booing and all this kind of stuff. And it shows the audience just, woo, woo, you know, mm -hmm. and you have, mm -hmm. I don't know, he's running against like what, five white guys and him and the audience, woo, woo, you know, and all this. And I was thinking, why are those people there? Those people are there to cheer on their runner. <laughs> it was that reality that that you know that that many people would just be booing him because he's black and because he's racing against their white guys or were they just trying to make a point you know I, I'm curious of just what the reality was back then in a public setting like that you know would would the mindset completely change from I'm cheering for my guy to I hate that guy because he's black and he's running against mm -hmm. my guy you know or were they just trying to make a point in the movie? I, I was curious if you guys have any thoughts on that. And I want to like go ask my my uh, husband's uncle who was <laughs> he was actually his high school was um, Little Rock. Like he was he was mm -hmm. in Little Rock, you know, oh, like wow. he was around then. Yeah. yeah. And like I want to ask him, like, you know, I just would think a lot of people would be like, that's not my preference, but I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. But or were they really out there like as outward as, you know, it's portrayed? I, what's your thoughts? My thoughts are 
Uh, I think that it, it was. And I, I think that it was um, because from what I read that um, uh, Larry Snyder actually did have to teach him to kind of block out everything right. around him. And okay. also just from my experience as yes. a sports fan in today's world is that yeah. people go to sports. They, they go to sports events, not just to cheer on their guy, but to to just be the okay. the the most basis person ever. You know, like if if um you know, if you go to a baseball game where the Houston Astros were playing Astros players and 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 even with other teams now get booed universally because of that whole cheating scandal that happened a few years ago. I know uh, and, people that still boo people when yeah. somebody who is on the Astros team plays on the Rangers field. Wow. Every time you go to the Rangers game, if somebody comes out to bat, that's even if they're on a different team, if they were on the Astros team when they cheated, they get booed. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And and there's there are certain players that, you know, with rivalries and things like I'm a I'm a Cardinals fan. And uh, uh, our former catcher, Yadier Molina, would get booed every time we would play in Cincinnati. Every time he, he was introduced before the game, every time he was introduced to it for an at-bat, any time his name, the whole place would just erupt in boos because of something that happened so many years ago. Probably half of those people weren't even, you know, cognizant of baseball at that yeah. point. So. So I think it, that people go to these games not just to cheer on their their people, but also to to express openly right. all of their I, feelings about things. So. Uh, that what you're saying totally makes sense. I always think anything that I go to to support my own kids, I'm not even paying attention to other people. You know what I mean? <laughs> I am only there to cheer my own kids, so I'm being very kind of you know egocentric with thinking well. Why would anyone not just cheer on their own person? But I get what you're saying. In fact, the whole like a hey, bada 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 bada. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that whole thing. To yeah. distract the batter. Mm -hmm. So like that's that, and I know nothing about baseball, but look, I came up with that. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I want to point out something about what you said because then you also see the juxtaposition later on that in the actual Olympics you have Germans that cheer on Jesse Owens. And that actually also happened, which you wouldn't expect. Right. Under Hitler, Germany. And yet that is actually historically accurate that like wow. the German people were so excited at seeing just how good Jesse Owens was. Wow. They cheered for him at the Olympics. Okay. And, and that's another thing about that, that you were talking about, about sport is that if you really love a sport, Seeing it done so well yes. is yes. it will catch you up in emotion and it and you will, you know. You are so right about that. <laughs> like yes. tears and, and screaming for people. I'm like, I can't believe I'm yelling. Like I did that last last uh last March when uh when Caitlin Clark was was shooting threes from way the heck out there. Um, in March Madness, she plays for Iowa. I'm from Illinois. We hate Iowa. <laughs> and yet, I was like, man, I like the way she plays. I like the way that, you know, she hustles and all of this. And I, I couldn't help myself from 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 being a fan of hers. So, so it is, you know, it transcends things. Sports does does transcend um, nationalities and race and all of all of these kind of things. If you truly love a sport, you will support people that you never really would have imagined yourself supporting. <laughs> sure. okay. All right. Still don't like the Vikings, though. I'll just say that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, got. I have to get that in. It's it's uh, it's part of me. Um, the thing that really bothered me, the only thing that bothered me about this film was uh, Lenny, Lenny Riefenstahl. And the way that they kind of sort of portrayed her as, you know, as being won over by Jesse and, and uh, you know, yeah. and, and, and uh, all of that. And I'm like, I don't think that that's real. 
and I don't like that you're trying to get, you know, have us have sympathy for for the Nazi movie pro- propaganda movie I was gonna maker. Say, the main person who is known <laughs> for Nazi fascist propaganda, like. I hadn't realized it was her. Like I wasn't putting it together until afterwards. And I went, oh wait, that's her. Oh, oh no, <laughs> no. Because yeah. she was, um, I mean, like she was a firm, you, you don't yeah. make propaganda like that unless you like are really, really, really believe in it. And it like redeemed her, making her like, mm-hmm. oh, she's just there to make her movies. And it felt to me like the token effort we wanted to have a woman in this movie in some way. Oh, to me, like, I don't know. To me, <laughs> I, well, and give her maybe a little bit more agency because Jesse's wife is kind of there to be cheated on by Jesse, oh, which of course they leave oh. out that he, he, he cheated on her until his death and stuff, you know. Does Sarah have something to say? She raised her hand. Ooh, I do. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we sure Sweet. can. All right. Yeah. So I'm so glad, Karen, you brought Lenny Riefenstahl up. <laughs> 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 oh, my goodness. She was a Nazi propagandist. <laughs> like, yeah. how? Yeah, how do you make her that. redeemable? Um, I like the idea that y- you mentioned that maybe they wanted to throw a woman in the movie because it is there aren't that many women in that movie at all, at all, at all. But even, I don't know. I mean, they tried to make her seem a bit more sympathetic. But even at the same time, it's almost like they were trying to kind of set her up as the German that just wants to show the glory of Germany and nothing else is going on. Oh, there's other stuff going on. She just doesn't see it. She just wants to show the glory of Germany. So maybe they were trying to do that. I don't think they do that very well, though. No, so. and they, I mean, and and in truth, they, they kind of do it well with um, Long, with uh, Luz Long, you know, the, the, his, the guy that competes against him that is like, then comes to his room and they they become friends and that's reality that actually happened and they it became did. friends while they were there and and that's someone who who was concerned with the sport and not with the ideology and and all of that kind of thing but Lenny yeah. Riefenstahl yeah <sighs> oh I did have a question for everybody here because I'm I'm really curious about your take on this because I'm torn on it and I don't know what to think of it. Uh, Lutz, Lutz, what, what, how do you say his name? Oh my god, I think it's Lutz, but that's like the German pronunciation. Okay, we'll say Lutz. I will get that. I want to anglicize it. It's Lutz, but I don't know. (laughs) So Lutz, um, he. There's this, you know, brilliant movie, like, moment in the movie when he, like, lays out the towel saying, like, Jesse, jump here so you don't miss Mm -hmm. it. And we do know for a fact that Jesse did scratch the first two takes and almost didn't get to. And then that whole scene where they're going back and forth, breaking the world record and everything, that happened. But the thing is, it has come out that Lutz never actually had that specific interaction with Jesse telling him to jump ahead. They did become friends. They did become friendly. Uh, Lutz wrote to him um, even after Jesse left uh, for Mm -hmm. World War II. But it's very interesting because Jesse Owens himself would tell that story even though it was false. And it Mm -hmm. wasn't until years later, people were like, hey, we were there. We saw that Lutz didn't actually talk to you until after the event was over. So we know that didn't happen. Are are you making that up? And Jesse Owens himself, like, admitted, he was like, yeah, it's not real, but it's a good story. Mm -hmm. And it's the kind of story that needs to be told. (laughs) So is it good that they left it in the movie or should they have not had that in the movie? I'm really torn because it is a good story. And it does say something to Lutz's character because they were friends after and they did stay in contact. And Lutz wrote to Jesse Owens, like, tell my boy, basically knowing he's going to die in World War II, which spoilers he did, guys. Yeah. Um, like, <laughs> tell tell my boy like, on how the things Eastern were Front? before the war. And he stuff. was 
So he he, he was uh, he died in Sicily. Oh, OK. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So wasn't on the eastern front, but wasn't a good front. <laughs> Not no, that any good. front of World War Two was good, but that one wasn't. Yeah. Good. yeah. <laughs> a good oh, front. Um, I don't I mean, oh, gosh. So if it comes from Jesse Owens, I think that this is a biopic about him with collaboration from his family. Like, I don't, I don't, I think that they include that. Um, I don't know that it detracts from that relationship that they had, because even if they didn't shake hands or embrace during the Olympic games, they still established some kind of relationship, friendship um, after the games that was significant. So I don't know. I'm 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 not so concerned about that. Karen, what do you think? Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. Um I you know, we we I don't want to say allow <laughs> because because frankly no one's us. asking us anything, right? But <laughs> but we we I I'll, let's say expect. Kind of when you go to a biopic, you kind of expect that there's going to be some artistic license taken and that maybe not everything is the absolute gospel truth. Um, and so I, I think it is a good story. It does add to it. And I don't know that it detracts if you leave it out. You know, like they they it still portrays Luz as the as this, you know, like gracious, um, like kind of host kind of, you know, uh, fellow competitor. And it, 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 even if he didn't, you know, help him you know, figure out where to take off from, um, <laughs> you know, um, he, he still ends up being a pretty decent fellow, I think. Um, so, I, you know, we'll, I, I, I was one thing that said he's the most famous uh, silver medalist in all of history. And because of that story, because like most of the time we don't know the silver medalist the same way. And I was like, oh, oh, Lisa wants to say something. Sorry. Okay. I was, was going to argue with that. But yeah. <laughs> the most, most famous second placer, right? <laughs> yeah, because yeah. we just ignore second place. It's yes, you win yes, or you win. lose. That's the only. <laughs> yeah. Zero yeah, sum game. Say, on the on what you were commenting on the um, when they make movies, you know, a lot of times uh -huh. they will take two or three, not just situations, but people, like separate people, and meld them together mm -hmm. into one character because they don't have, you know, the time, the place, whatever, to have all these different actors to, you know, to be all these different people. So they they just combine them into one. And, and so that's what they did is they took their friendship and they, you know, all these different situations they did have combined it all into one and then decided with their artistic license when that needed to become, happen since it aligned with some story that was, you know, may or may not be accurate, you know, yeah. so that was, that was my thought on that, but um, anyway, yeah. that is and funny. To list. And especially since most of this film was fairly accurate. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you, if you look it up afterwards, you know, they, all of the, all of the websites and the reviews and everything is like, yeah, it was, it was mainly pretty good. There were a couple of, of, of moments. The, the Lini Riefenstahl thing stands out and, um, and you know that, but it, as a story that he even told himself, it, it wasn't seen as that big of a deal. Um, let's see. I um, <laughs> I had a lot of questions about the coach. I, I looked those up, and those are mostly real, too. And, and having Jesse on his team it did raise his profile enough that he was, uh, he was later, like, um, in the uh, track and field Hall of Fame and, and all of this. So, you know, that's – I mean, they played it pretty, pretty close to reality. Um, there were uh, – two two times during the film where I was like oh man and and it was both of them were you know my my initial reaction were sometimes boys are dumb and uh it was it was when he cheated on on Ruth you know and and that was just you know disappointing and then to find out that yeah it's true it's like oh man you know <laughs> I don't want I don't want that to be true but uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't unusual, let's say. 
Um, and then the other one was, um, and, and this one is a little bit um, not historically accurate, in, and that is with Avery Brundage, um, um, when he, uh, you know, is over there talking to Goebbels, and Goebbels is like, oh, we're going to make a, a, a what is it, a, a, a <laughs> an embassy in washington dc and wouldn't it be awesome if you could design it and all of these you know and and i was just like no don't 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 make a deal with the nazis don't do it you know and then they, he does because it's gonna make him a, a, a whole bunch of money and it's like you know uh it's disappointing again but it it is it wasn't unusual because companies in the united states a lot of them uh, made deals with the Nazis, and and so it, it's technically uh, apparently that deal didn't happen until after the Olympics, and it isn't technically the it wasn't that um, um, blackmail that that made them change the uh, Jewish uh, runners off of the four by one hundred, um, but. Um, it, it still it was disappointing. Don't make deal with Nazis. That's I think those are words to live by. I think the whole um, controversy about even going to the 1936 Olympics, they did mention it. I thought that maybe they could do a bit more with it because it was controversial. I mean, there was a lot of pushback against participating, going into the nest of Nazi Germany. It, so I don't know. I think they could have done a little bit more with that and the controversy surrounding Jeremy Irons, because I'll only call him Jeremy Irons because he's like the perfect actor. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, I think they could have done a, a bit more with that controversy. I will say, however, and Samantha and I talked about this before, they cast the very perfect person to play Joseph Goebbels because he scared the heck out of me. And I can't imagine that meeting Josef Goebbels in real life wouldn't do the same thing. So <laughs> that was a perfectly cast character. Yeah, yeah. And and I was going to like, I was going to include him in my uh, introduction of, of where we've seen him before. And the fact of the matter is, I haven't seen him in anything else before. And in pretty much every, um, every, <laughs> Every credit he had was from a, a German speaking German film. <laughs> so oh my. So okay. I think <laughs> I think he might just be a German actor <laughs> and not really have <laughs> have uh, have bridged that gap. So mm. I was shocked how much he looked like him because like, I pulled up one Crazy. website and it was showing the actor versus the person they were playing. And like I was like, oh yeah, he kind of looks like Jesse Owens, but Jesse Owens was actually way ganglier, and you know, like it was kind of funny seeing like the differences. And then you got to him, and you're like, oh my gosh, it's a twin. Like, so are you suggesting he shouldn't do his uh, ancestry? No <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> I just wouldn't want to know. No. No, I would not want to know either. Um, yeah. Uh, so Goebbels was uh, terrifying. Um, what also was terrifying, uh, a, a scene in there that was terrifying, was when um, uh, Jason Sudeikis, uh, <laughs> Ted Lasso, oh, yes. goes to get the shoes. Yes. yes. And did you know those were Adidas? Did you know that? Okay, so I did look that I, up after, and I'm super bummed they up. didn't include it because the guy who started Adidas actually went to Jesse Owens to get him. And so they say it's probably like one of the first, oh my gosh, what is that called? Um, sponsorship? Sponsorship. My brain is yeah. done. Thank you. <laughs> uh, first sponsorship deals ever done. And I was kind of bummed they didn't do it that way around to just show how like people were excited about Jesse Owens too. But the way they did it, him getting the Adidas scared me so that bad. Was I was so sure he was gonna die. Yeah, or be put on the same wagon with the Jews who were being rounded up. I mean, yeah. Um, Karen, maybe you know this, isn't there, is it a controversy with Adidas or is it another shoe company and the Nazis? 
It's, is it Adidas? No, it's Adidas. Okay, it's Adidas. that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was interesting yes. that they didn't specifically mention that. They just kind of like threw it in there, kind of, mm -hmm. and you have to do research to figure it out. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. It didn't even, it didn't even click with huh. me that it was Dossler, right? That's, that's the guy's name. Adi Dossler. Adi Dossler. Yeah. It's, Adi it's Dossler. like right there. Adi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was a scary, kind of a scary uh, moment there whenever he was, he was, and, and, you know, and uh, I'm not, I don't, look, look, filmmakers, I, I question all of them. Now that I have become a, a Spielberg stan and that every scene and every minute and every shot and every scene has to mean something to the overall larger picture. What is that? What does that scene mean? What is that doing? Is it like just portraying how terrifying the times were or, or what is it? Or you know? maybe um, it's the whole, like I mentioned with Lenny Riefenstahl, like here's the glory of the Olympic games in Berlin. Oh, but behind the scenes, here's the reality. I and we don't really me, see much of that. So I maybe they were kind of that. throwing it in. See, I didn't need it by that point, though, because we'd already yeah. seen it when what's Jeremy Irons shows up and you yeah. see the mass. <laughs> yeah. We're just, we're just I, agree. I do think it was trying to show the juxtaposition of like, oh, look at how pretty it is over here versus the reality. But we'd already seen that. I was like, we yeah. all knew that, right? We knew, hmm. right? How much did, I mean, I, I found myself wondering, like, what happens if those Jewish athletes decide to go out into the city? What happens? To them? And they're asked for their papers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that could be, yeah, bad. My guess is you just did it. Because you were fearful of that, at least a healthy fear. Or hopefully the you I don't know, that would be interesting to to research if the U.S. Olympic Committee said, hey, don't go outside, like stay in the Olympic Village, stay don't Olympic don't Village. venture. Yeah. yeah. I Pretty mean, crazy. from what I've heard, people really enjoy staying in the Olympic Village, <laughs> typically speaking. <laughs> So <laughs> they might not even very much want to go outside. But some people actually like to be tourists in the cities that they're sure. in. <laughs> Maybe not I mean, Nazi I'm Germany, for that. I'm just saying <laughs> these athletes. I, I mean, and with a lot of these athletes, the likelihood that they're going to come back to Berlin is uh, mm. you know, slim to none. So maybe they would. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I'm just thinking about you know, like you know Olympic athletes and today. They always have like it seems like as soon as their as soon as their sport is over, then they can go and like have fun and and go and and see things and all of that. And I just wonder if if those guys were just severely restricted, because I mean I can't even imagine how terrifying that would have been. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Um, well, and I know one of the Jewish men who was not allowed to run in the 400 meter that Jesse Owens took his place. Um, and that was historically accurate. I was really glad they included all of that information. Um, I know one of them returned to the United States and never ran another race again. Like he, he boycotted ever racing. One of them became like a radio personality or something like they, they like both went on to be successful in very different ways, but like, um, one thing that they show in the film that wasn't accurate because I was looking up stuff about that. Um, one of them wouldn't even watch the 400 meter race. They were they 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 were just like, no, I'm not gonna go watch it. I'm not gonna approve of this. Like this is clearly anti-Semitism. And so I, I can imagine at that point they just wanted to go home. Yeah, yeah. See, what what normally happens in in the Olympics of today, and I can't really speak to, you know, 1936. That was, you know, before my time. Um, what? I know. I know. I'm not that old, but <laughs> we love you. Um, <laughs> what happens in the Olympics today is 
for the four by 100, the four by 200 and, and those races, they have, there's a, there's a team and, and it's generally expected that the people who win the actual 100 yard dash would be on that team. So it seems weird to me that he wasn't on it already. Um, frankly, but the team that runs like, because they have, uh, heats that they have to do to qualify for the final. And, and those, those top athletes aren't, don't usually, you know, if you get first place in the hundred yard dash, you're probably not going to run the preliminary rounds of the one four by 100. And so when they give, um, when they give out gold medals, the, all the people who ran in, in all of the heats win. So there's usually like six people who get medals for the four by 100. I know we only usually think about four, but usually they give, they give like six medals out to the, to the people who are running in the heats. And I don't know. I guess they didn't do that then. I guess they, you know, I, maybe they, maybe they were like way more, um, uh, you know, spent a way more time training on the handoffs because that is always a, you know, kind of um, a fraught moment because you only have a, so much space to do, to execute a handoff and you don't want to have to, you know, you want to, the other guy to start running and, you know, not have to start from a dead stop um, in order to get a better time, which, you know, they're they're always going for. So um, I, I guess they didn't do that then. I guess, I don't, I don't know. know. Are you guys obsessed with the Olympics? Is it just uh, me? Yes. No, no. <laughs> okay. I love them every four years. Every, right. well, two. But every time they come on, yes, I'm obsessed with them. Uh, but that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know if they changed the rules at some point to do that. I don't know. I'm gonna have to look it up now. I'm now I'm really curious because I know that the two guys were really angry, but I don't think they were given gold medals. No, I'm pretty sure they weren't. So, um, yeah, yeah, because it seems like that would uh, that would have made them significantly less angry. I would imagine. Um, (laughs) Yeah, but there's a part of it like you want to be part of like you've trained specifically for this event. You want to actually do the event. And especially for them, they're like showing off their papers like Jewish, like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To not get get to prove that. Because Germany did not let their Jewish uh, sports peoples uh, compete in the 1936 Olympics, even when they were the best in their field at that time. Yeah. I mean, Yes, exactly. I mean, many of them were probably already living in ghettos and mm-hmm. and uh, um, all of that. But um, and 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 that brings me back to something I wanted to to say to you about um, Jesse Owens being more gangly and not as and and part of that is because of nutrition of food mm-hmm. uh-huh. and and yeah, not not having a whole lot during his lifetime right and today the actors that that portray him are you know have have better nutrition certainly and also like weight training and all of that <laughs> um so they are more bulky than uh the athletes back then who who all look a little bit skinny to me yes sorry sorry you have to leave Lisa, um, thanks for joining us while you can. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Sorry to sorry to head out, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> yep. So, um, so yeah, that's that's probably a little bit of the reason why he he seems like I like I said I I think they all look really skinny whenever you watch these these old uh, and it's like eee, yikes. I think some of it's <laughs> also the really short shorts that they wear because yeah. I won't lie I look at pictures of my dad and he did track in college and I'm like dude you look so like like not thin you look skinny like I'm worried about you a little bit and it's those little tiny shorts 
<laughs> I think some of it's also cost, like, you know what I mean? I don't know. I, I don't even want to comment on this because, <laughs> because I know that there are photos out there of me in those short shorts. It's what we wore back then. You should um, not have told us that. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know how you think you're going to get a hold of any of them. I mean. <laughs> Where there's a the world, there's a way. <laughs> I am the keeper of photographs in my family, so. Hmm. I really don't know how you think you're going <laughs> to. But. Um, but yes, it, it was it was certainly different about that. Um, Ohio State too. Let's talk about the Ohio State University, and and they were um, one of the early adopters. Um, well, Coach Schneider was one of the early adopters to allow um, black people on his team. Um, obviously, the football team was not as uh, as early, um, and and. As as we mentioned, it the, it it raised Coach Schneider's profile, and so he he does end up in the track and field Hall of Fame. Uh, whatever happened to the Ohio State football team? Oh wait, uh, no, never mind. Uh, nothing um, great. No, nothing. nothing. Great. Certainly nothing recently. Okay, great. I gotta <laughs> admit something embarrassing. Every time they said OSU. I was like, when did Oklahoma show up? Because I've lived in Texas my whole life. So OSU to me is Oklahoma State University. Wow. And it was really messing with me. I am so sorry. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> did anybody else have that problem? Anybody else a Texan or Oklahoman here? Or, or an Oregonian, because they have one too, mm. just FYI. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I think there was another one. Yeah, Oregon, Oregon State. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah there you go. Oh, there yes. you go. <laughs> Thank there you. you. Okay, right. I appreciate it. Wasn't just me. No, no, not this time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, I didn't um, cry either. Did anybody cry in this film? Mm, wait, 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 no. Fess up. Um, <laughs> I don't think anyone's singling out this time. Mm -mm. No, I'm sorry. I probably shouldn't have singled you out for crying so many times at Tuskegee Airmen, but it was funny. So. Oh, but to single you out, all the racists weren't all Southerners in this. Well, it's about damn time, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> are we counting all of Nazi Germany? <laughs> hey, they're pretty far north. <laughs> Ohio is pretty far north. So yeah, that's true. Yeah, and there, there were plenty in California too when they went out there for the for the uh, NCAA finals. So yeah, uh, yeah. We so got they, they, they seen our racist. They did. There was there was great diversity in in the racists on this, and that's that's good. And I don't know why you're giving me crap about that. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It did not. Did. Did Dr. Roy not say that yesterday? Was I, I imagining know. it? I thought he had said something remember. about that. Oh, he's, oh, I know what he said. He was talking about, he had a, and I don't know if you were there yet, Samantha. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> very early on, he had a picture up of, no, I think you weren't there, um, of the um, uh, Benjamin O. Davis. Did you know there were two of them? No, uh -uh. there's a junior and a senior. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember. I remember. And this. one was a yeah. general, and one was a colonel. Yeah. And then in between them was this other colonel, who's a white guy, and he was like, um, he was he was like that, um, um, the guy, the the non-racist guy, right? Only uh -huh. that guy in reality was from Texas. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. And and so Dr. Moy was saying that, you know, like, believe it or not, this guy, uh, he was he was the rarest. Of, he said he's the rarest of all birds. He was a, a <laughs> liberal white Texan. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> so he probably noticed that all of the um, racists were from the South, too. So, um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> 
I am posting stuff in the chat right now. So talk amongst yourselves, Sarah and and uh, oh. Samantha. Um, yeah. Haley, okay. anything else you would guys like noticed? To, uh, Oh, Haley did, would like to join in you, too. She could. Um, did you um, get annoyed as annoyed as I did with all of the like post movie information? Like it just kept uh, coming. Oh. Yeah. I feel like that has become like a standard biopic thing. Let's give you lots of information. And I kind of just tuned it out at that point because I really yeah. liked the ending with the little boy yeah. asking for the autograph. I was like, there, what, when he that's does it, that's elevator. all I need. Yeah. But there's, there was also a part of it that was like, blink and you missed it. Um, but the part where Jesse Owens' dad gets a job as a, a groundskeeper or custodian. I can't remember which one. It was like one of those. Mm -hmm. Karen, do you remember? I don't remember if it was groundkeeper. I think it was groundkeeper, but I that I sounds remember. right. But yeah, so he gets a job at the end. But then I'm I'm like, are you putting that in there? Is a good thing? Because I don't I don't know that it's like he's being given a his son won an Olympic medal, and the best you could do is make him a groundskeeper. Oh <laughs> yeah, no, I have to look up some of that. <laughs> afterwards and apparently yeah. he like really struggled with depression all of his life like jesse owen's dad i mean um, I can because he struggled with depression he ended up losing his job a lot of times so he couldn't ever hold down a job which just makes jesse owen struggle even more but it was kind of one of those things that yeah i was like I, I didn't really need that yeah like i know it's called race and not jesse owens or something but it's still like right. i don't know I really liked his, like, there was little moments from the dad that I actually did enjoy, like, when he got mad at the NAACP a little bit, and, like, yeah. he clenched his hands. Like, there was some, like, yeah. good little acting moments that I was like, I don't know who you are as an actor, but I kind of want to look you up now. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I didn't feel like I needed that at the end. I didn't need closure for his dad. Yeah. Yeah, it was just weird. I didn't know why they decided to include that little bit of information, especially without the context. Well, it would seem yeah. like uh, Jesse Owens' yeah. uh, kids, kids and grandkids were involved in making this movie. So maybe oh, they really okay. wanted to say something about it. Oh, um, maybe. Yeah. It might be. It might, it might have been for, for them. Um, Otherwise, I can't. I can't think and of of why. And and honestly, um, did did they not say something about the? Did they say something about the uh, sixty eight in that in that scroll? I think they did say something did about they? how. I don't there know. Was so much, little... There was so much scroll. <laughs> like I yeah. I did. I there, just there, there was too, there was while. absolutely too much scroll. We didn't need to do that. To, I think to I do left that. the room during that part. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember some of this. I think I was like, eh, and I just left the room. <laughs> Janitor. Uh, it was possible um, that I may, it may have been in the scroll, but it also may have been something I read otherwise. But um, mm -hmm. about the 68 um, Olympic protests where they raised their fist, that he, yeah. um, he came out initially um against those guys and said they shouldn't mm. have done it and all of that but then later very shortly later he thought better of it and and supported them so yeah. um it, you know I it's, did it's, like I did like that they included included in the never-ending scroll it was almost like Star Wars at the beginning um <laughs> that, um the um American government and the Roosevelt administration never acknowledged jesse owens accomplishments at the olympics and yeah. that i liked but then again at the same time like give some context <laughs> i mean i don't know i don't i don't know i don't know that they teased out some of the things that happened that were happening in 1930s america that they probably could have it just kind of annoyed me a little bit and that was one yeah of yeah, there. I mean, the need for context would have been great. Like, I don't, and I don't, I don't know this myself for for sure. But that, I mean, did they invite the Olympic winners and athletes to the White House? Even they in, typically in the, did. 
Uh, they typically invited all the winners to the White House afterwards so they can gr- could congratulate them and everything. Uh, kind of like the whole Hitler shaking the hands. That whole thing happened, although actually he didn't snub Jesse Owens. He actually snubbed the African-American who won the high jump because he won mm-hmm. the high jump on the first day. Um, and so, uh, yeah, no, typically the White House did invite them all like kind of like almost like a dinner or something like that. And they never invited any of the black athletes, basically. Mm. That would have been yeah. interesting context to put in the movie. Yeah, yeah. And, and important good. context, too. Um, mm-hmm. Speaking of Hitler, he shows up <laughs> a couple of times. I but you never wonder, really see his face, do you? No, you never see his face. You never hear him speak. You know, it's always kind of through Goebbels. Yeah. And that was you kind of see a too. side shot of him and you see a little yeah. bit of flash and mustache and you know that's yeah. who it was, but they never uh yeah. And I that think that's an probably move. Yeah. I, am, am I just like starting to side with directors all the time now? Is this yeah. is this what's happened to me in this <laughs> in this whole thing? Is that that was that's an interesting choice and I think I I, I like this as a choice because okay. it kind of shows that you don't have to Like he is a specter over all Mm -hmm. of it. And you don't really even have to look at him to know that that that's, you know, his shadow is cast over the whole the whole Olympics. And so I think that that's I I think that was a good uh, an an interesting, good uh, artistic choice. And and I I liked it because, you know, I mean, too often um, when when you portray a a figure a Hitler figure or a figure like Hitler in movies, it's a caricature. Yeah. And, and you don't really need that because yeah. the, the man himself was, was frightening and, and, you know, so it's, you know, just, just leave been, out the caricature. We've had this discussion before. Like you don't need to try to make Nazis bad. They're bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, you don't need to, <laughs> yeah. to work on doing that. They're bad. What? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, and I didn't that. mean, and, yeah. and you don't, I mean, you meet Goebbels and you are, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, you, you know that he's a bad guy and uh, you don't need to meet his boss that he's afraid of. Right. I mean, <laughs> I, and I, I, I liked that they added moments that were chilling, like apart from Hitler and, and Goebbels, like the moment in the stadium where everybody's doing the Hitler salute and yelling, that was a chilling moment. So I did like that they they added things like that into the film, just yeah. to kind of give a sense of like this is serious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was. Um, yes. So yeah. Uh, it, I feel like they did a good job with portraying how um, how terrifying the things were. Um, yeah. And I, I don't know. I, I I really I really did like this movie. I I like uh, the Olympics. I'm super obsessed with them. I have been my entire life. Uh, track and field has always been something that is especially. I, I was obsessed about, you know, I, I, I very vividly remember watching the 84 Olympics to see if Carl Lewis could in fact duplicate uh, what Jesse Owens did in 36 and he did, and then he did it again. Um, so it was, you know, it's, uh, I, I really liked this movie and, you know, I, I was, I wasn't bothered by the things that it left out for the most part. I would have liked more context on, you know, uh, some of that, but that was just the scroll. They could have added another sentence. You know, typically all of the winners were invited to the house, <laughs> the white house, but you know, I mean, it would have been that freaking simple to, to add that. You're not asking you to shoot another scene or anything. Um, and, uh, so I, you know, i I really liked this movie. Like I said, the only times I was ever, uh, I, I was ever like, ah, oh, or disappointed. It was just because of the choice that men made. And, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. 
and that you know be better guys that's that's all don't cheat on your the mother of your child that that you supposedly love desperately maybe don't cheat on her then how about that um you know um Maybe don't make a deal with Nazis if you're embarrassed for it to come out that you've made a deal with Nazis. Maybe, maybe don't do that, you know? Um, so it, it wasn't, none of the disappointment that I felt was because of the movie. It was because of the people. In except the for what's her face. And, except for Lini Riefenstahl. Yes. And, and that was that, I mean, that was a choice and that one I can't, I can't defend the the director on that and yeah. and i don't think we should be make, trying to make nazi sympathetic figures no. so no. um other than that i i really i really liked this movie it was it was great um even even the way that he ran mm. in the races <laughs> was was very reminiscent, you know, like the bet over and the, you know, all of that and uh, of, of Jesse Owens style. And so, it, you know, they, they really did a great job there. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I was pretty happy with it. Yeah. It's a good, I like a good sports movie and it was yeah. a good sports movie. Yeah. It was a good sports movie that, so often, like with biopics, we talk about the making the similar kinds of mistakes, kind of overgeneralizing. And I feel like it did at least less of some of that. Um, it, it stayed more true to the reality. It did the nuance at the end. It didn't make it like, oh, he defeated racism. Like it, 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 yeah. it didn't do that. So it was kind of nice to have a good feel good sports movie, but it didn't try to fix everything. It just showed that this is one part of the problem at that time. So do you think it really what? <laughs> do you really look at this as a biopic of Jesse Owens? I don't think so. I really, it felt mm -hmm. more like a biopic of the 1936 yeah. Olympics. Yeah. Which I guess not a biopic then, I guess an event pick. I don't, I don't know, yeah. what's that called? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're movie. gonna go with this called a movie. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't it's bio. It's a historically really based movie. That's what it's called. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like three years of his life. <laughs> so I yeah. don't know that you can call three years of Which, his life a biopic. Also, yeah, I liked yeah. that we didn't see his whole life because I, I didn't really need to see like his childhood. I liked where they started it. That was a good choice. Oh, I kind of wanted to see his childhood. <laughs> Sarah like, wants what's that to be thing that she cut out of his chest? Like, yeah. I needed that information. <laughs> what is that thing that he cut out of his chest? <laughs> that was scary. Like, what is that? Yeah, it's very, yeah. Um, I think that there, there's a, you know, there's a biopic that could be made about Jesse Owens, but I don't think this yeah. is it. I think that, you know, and even the name race, right? It's, it's, yeah. it's it's playing off of two different definitions of it, you know, sure. race, the, the contest between, you know, the men there. Um, and then also race because so much of, of the build up to the Olympics and after the Olympics and all of that had to do with the concept of, of race as, as you know, uh, him being black. And uh, so, it's I, I think that it was it was pretty it was pretty well done. Um, you know, I wish they could get some Americans to play some American historical figures um, someday. That's going to happen. And uh, Haley actually said Malcolm X. Uh, that's that's one. But then we, we were like, yeah, but Spike Lee made that. Right. Um, and then both of us had to look up to see who played Bayard Rustin in the Netflix uh, movie Rustin uh, because, you know, it's made by the Obamas. And we were like, oh, it'd be super disappointing if uh, the Obamas casted some Brits as, as Rustin. And good news, guys, that dude's an American. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And not, as, not only is he American, he is gay and married to you. Oh man, so 
Oh, okay. diversity. Base. Good, good casting, Obama's way to go. Um, so, um, don't have to be mad at them for that. Um, so that's we can't uh, blame Obama for that. No, no, other things, but not that. No, it's it's it's, it's a non-ironic. Thanks, Obama. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Um, right. Wait, uh, Haley anybody say something? Anybody? Haley doesn't want to say anything because oh, low key okay. she did watch the movie. Um, <laughs> I, I don't watch movies, and you've already Haley. said all the things that we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. My rant is the like, why are keep we keep casting black British people <laughs> to play American figures? Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. That's my rant. <laughs> yeah. And the only two examples are are black people who are directing the film. So mm, yeah. 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 Because some it's of fair. some of some of the character development, like it's it's actually relevant. It's not just like some of the character development is lived experience. It's culture. Yeah. Well, isn't that yeah. what that's a famous um Somebody asked Denzel Washington mm. um, uh, about directing a movie as a black director, and he said it's about culture. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. somebody else could direct Schindler's List, but having Steven Spielberg direct, Schindl direct Schindler's List, it's about culture. He understands culture and, mm -hmm. and all of the things that are tied into that. So, yeah, I think there is something to that. Like for Selma, now, MLK's family did not approve of Selma, which sure. tells you a lot about what to expect from it. But having a black British man play Martin Luther King Jr., like, I'm, hey, for other people, do whatever. But those key figures, well, I think, are special, are special, especially as black actors and actresses playing yeah. those figures are like, you know roles almost, that can be roles of a lifetime let's say and that. it's almost Playing like Coretta. Playing, it's the idea that we don't have black actors who can play it those. implies like, that of course we do of course it we implies do. that so, though yeah it, it also does. shows that maybe white directors don't want to cast black american actors i'm not saying that they don't it's the optics of it yeah well i think a lot of it has to do also with the background of of these actors because actors from England usually have a theater uh, background or, um, you know, that Shakespeare education uh, kind of background. And so they're taken more seriously than mm -hmm. actors, than black actors. I think actors it's also because they're not in, American. In the United States, because actors in the United States, there's this this uh, idea that that they aren't serious about their craft. They're just uh you know pretty boys you know like muscled up and very good looking and maybe they haven't and and it's not just black actors that's pretty Hold much on. what himbos um, himbo yeah there you go yeah kind of you know cuz cuz they all have to be like super buff and all of this kind of thing because we put them in marvel films and superheroes roles and all of this kind of thing and you you concentrate more on you know making sure that my face is is pretty and making sure that my body is buff and not as much on the the skill of acting the craft of acting and and that's not what they do in england they they are they go through the theater and they learn the craft of acting. And I think that there are a lot of directors who are, are very um, uh, prejudiced about that or, or yeah. elitist about that, that, that are like, Oh, we don't want any of these Americans who just, you well, know. and I think especially with a serious topic, biopic or bio event, whatever kind of film where it is meant to be that like we want people from the get go to take it seriously. And so I think that unfortunately then they have their own personal biases with what is serious. Mm -hmm. Never mind yeah, yeah. actors. The whole point is they can act. I mean, 
Well, <laughs> to well, be fair, not all of them. Yeah. <laughs> Which ones, Karen? <laughs> I, um... We might be here a while, Sarah. <laughs> not what we're talking about today. Not that I'm putting you on the spot or anything. I'm just wondering. <laughs> there are there are people who can't act their way out of a paper bag. I think we all know that. It's it's uh <laughs> Oh, good. You know? Yeah. Um but uh but I, you know, while I understand why they do it, I don't like it and I do think that we have really good actors. I mean, yes. I think that um and I think that like like Chadwick Boseman played a lot of these, you know, in uh, um, in in uh, Marshall, Th you know, about Thurgood Marshall. He played Thurgood Marshall and he's he, uh, you know, and even uh, Michael B. Johnson. Johnson. Yes. Michael B. Johnson. Is it Johnson? Jordan. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan. Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The Sprinters, Michael. Johnson um <laughs> with the gold shoes and the no okay I remember uh, okay 90s thank you Olympics thank you <laughs> yeah it was 90s like 96 and yeah um anyway um Michael B Jordan uh played um in uh um have mercy he played uh a guy that did the equal justice initiative thing so we do have some um, really uh, well Stevenson. respected, yeah. Um, but not enough, I think. I think that David Kaluuya and. Uh, um, but I think that shows some of the the problems with Hollywood. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Because it's about giving opportunities. So yes, typecasting yes. and and all of and those also, things. And yeah. also, it's 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 it's. It's racism. Yeah. It's it's being able to convince yourself that non-American black people count the same. Canadians, it's literally skirting. And the only one that they don't do it with is like a Denzel. Yeah. But how yeah. much is that is because he got roles by people like Spike Lee, right? Playing roles like Malcolm X or in Glory that allowed him to be cast further. Um, so it's, it's choice because they still like to make a lot of those movies. Like what was the green book yeah. or it's not yes. even about green book. Right. So I, there, it's, it's those layers, I think. Oh, I forgot about, about that guy with the guy with the deep voice. Mahershala mm -hmm. Ali. Mahershala yeah, Ali. I'm here yeah. for names apparently. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll watch that's... the movies. I'm just here to know who the people <laughs> are. Yeah. Uh, Mahershala Ali is an, another of these younger, and he, I mean, they're not young, young anymore, um, uh, but younger than Denzel. Yeah. Um, well, my other example is the, is the guy who played Fred Hampton. Yeah, that guy, yeah. Wasn't that David Kaluuya? Yes, Daniel. Daniel Kaluuya. Yeah. Daniel Kaluuya. Yeah, and, and that also one. Also a brilliant. Really also a Brit, but also like 20 years too old to play Fred. <laughs> yeah. So, but they'd rather um, pick a 20 plus year old person who's British. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, uh, I studied Britain and for some reason they, it makes me go on an anti-British rants often. Yeah, every <laughs> once in a while we do this. Um, all right. I can't um, help it. All right, let's round this puppy up. Um, I'm yeah. going to, uh, post one more time the, uh, the form to uh, be counted present in this thing for uh, folks who want to be counted present in this thing. And, um, and overall, um, I would give uh, race a definite thumbs up. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, I, we spoiled it for you, but, but did we really spoil it for you? I mean, it is a historical fact that Jesse Owens won four gold medals in the 1936 uh, Berlin Olympics. So it, 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 it was kind of sort of already, uh, spoiled for you. So I, I say, if you haven't watched it already, give it a watch. It's a, it's a good movie. Um, it is free for students and faculty and staff to watch through the, uh, 
TCC uh, library website and you go to the list of alphabetical uh, databases and it is Swank Digital Campus and and then you can put the the name of it in the corner and and look for it. Um, there are tons more. Uh, I think a thousand five at last count uh, movies that you can watch um, uh, using Swank uh, Digital Campus. Um, if you have Netflix, it is also on Netflix. Um, our next uh, movie that we will be watching is um, A Call to Spy. Um, and it is uh, about women spying for Great Britain in uh, World War II. So, um, so that one we're okay with British actors in. Yes. Well, we if are. it's a British movie, yeah. then I guess. I mean, of course. I mean, I would have preferred course. Irish actors, but uh, <laughs> you, even some Scottish actors. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. We have to see if any of them are Americans in this because I, I will really crack up if they are. Well, Kate Blanchett is, I'm thinking is about Australian, Reed, right? Mostly. Yes, Kate Blanchett. Yeah, but is. that's that's but the Empire. next one after this. That's oh, whatever. Oh, that's not gray. a cold spy. Who's in a cold spy? And no one that I know. No. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking of a different movie. Sorry. Disregard. Yeah. Disregard. Charlotte Gray. That's that's Charlotte that's, Gray. that's right. Okay. Yeah. That's uh that's after spring break. Um. Okay. Yeah. Uh. But uh, uh, in a call to spy, I don't think it's anybody that I knew ahead of time. But it is a good movie. I will say that it is a good movie. And and I didn't really even know about these women spy program in, in great britain so i was <laughs> i learned a lot so um so i highly recommend it and uh you know if you can if you can watch it please do and and join us uh two weeks from today i guess uh right before spring break mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah we did that didn't we wow <laughs> That's that was you, something Karen. we did <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to wee my way out of it, but yeah, it was me. It was totally me. All right, then um, make sure that you uh, fill out the form. Uh, thanks for coming, uh, and uh, we'll see you hopefully in two weeks with uh, a call to spy. It's a really, it's a really, it's a good one. It's a good one. I think we're gonna make uh, Haley watch this one. And actually, <laughs> I'm gonna stop the recording. Yeah. All right, no more.